San Francisco Vegetarian Society, which we're all very excited because we've been here for 15 years and we have a beautiful day today. And we're very excited to kick off our first presentation of the day with Chef Sherry Storia. so much for coming here the first first presentation of the uh, of the San Francisco veg fest I'm really happy to be here this is one of my favorite festivals of the year and I missed last year because I went to the International Vegetarian Union annual Congress in Malaysia if any of you ha ever have an opportunity to go to one of the uh, International Union uh, Vegetarian Union Congress meetings they are in a different country every year and it's so much fun and uh, so I encourage you to take in as much of of the vegetarian world as you possibly can so yes my name is Sherry Soria for those of you who are just arriving I'm the founder and director of Living Light Culinary Institute we are a licensed culinary school that resides in Fort Bragg, California, so we're really neighbors. It may seem to you like we're a long way away, but people come to our school from over 60 different countries. Typically, our, our student body is half international. Not just Canada, which is a nearby neighbor, but all over Latin America, all over Asia, all over Europe, even places like Iceland and Greenland and the Caribbean and everywhere. So it's a lot of fun. You, you find out that this is not just some little trend in California. It's a worldwide revolution, which is the reason why I called, uh, not my last book, but my previous book, uh, raw food revolution diet because it really is a revolution and I want you to know that I really honor all of you for being a part of that revolution because we are changing the world we're changing the way the world thinks about food we are uh, saving the lives of countless animals and definitely making a positive impact on the environment due to our food choices and my my I guess experience tells me that if you eat a diet that is high in raw food, you're also going to live longer and live healthier. And yes, I have been teaching vegetarian cooking for 40 years, raw culinary arts for 20 years. I'm 67. So thank you. And, uh, and I even feel better than I look. So just imagine that. Yes, uh, and I, you know, it's not just about food. But it, food is very important, definitely. It is a foundation. And I'm not going to say that you should eat 100% raw 100% of the time, but you should make good food choices as much as possible. So I would recommend that if you eat, when you eat cooked food, I do eat cooked food. I'm not 100% raw all the time. I'm mostly raw all the time, but I do eat some steamed yams and some steamed quinoa. I like to have some cooked, warm, warm cooked food sometimes. And believe me, in the winter time, I don't get cold eating salads and, and raw soups either because I don't eat chilled foods. So people ask me that quite often. How can I stay warm in the winter? I need something, you know, more hearty, warming, and so forth. Well, of course, I'm going to show you today some meaty, cheesy, hearty, satisfying recipes because, you know, I can do that. I can share that with you. But even if you're eating simpler foods at home, wash your foods in warmer water. They don't have to come right out of the fridge and into your belly and cool you. So you can definitely be warm through the winter even if you're eating raw food. 
Now before I go any further, I would like to introduce you to my team. Um, we have James and Heidi and Noel over here. They're all graduates of our program. And, uh, and James is an instructor at the school. Noel is a demo coordinator and Heidi is a volunteer graduate of the Gourmet program, as is Cynthia, who is going to be up here. She helped me put my demo trays together today. So thanks, Cynthia, as well. And my husband, Dan Latterman, is co-director of the school. And he's going to make sure that you see everything that's going on today. Uh, our school, as I said, it's a licensed culinary school. There are a lot of people who teach classes and they, you know, will give you a certificate of accomplishment. But we're actually a licensed culinary school that specializes in raw vegan cuisine and we're the only one. And we're not just for chefs. We are for anyone who wants to make healthy living delicious. We have all kinds of programs. You don't have to want to be a chef to come for a weekend or a week or even three weeks. A 21-day program will change your life, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> One who knows. So today I'm going to be sharing with you, and by the way, you all have information on your, uh, on your chairs. Hopefully you have it. Um, we have... The three, de the three recipes that I'm going to be demonstrating. Just having the recipe, though, doesn't give you all the little tips that I'm going to be giving you today. And at the end of the program, you're going to get to taste it. So, um, and besides that, I just want to remind those of you who don't know, we, Living Light Culinary Institute, is catering the Gourmet Raw Vegan Dinner tonight. And it is going to be fantastic. It's a Mediterranean feast, what some people call a metze meal. And um, we are going to have, I don't know if you have that information on you, we're starting with a hibiscus cooler, we're going to have a no bean hummus, olive onion focaccia bread, hemp nut tabbouli, zucchini dolmas with preserved lemon sauce, falafels with yogurt, cashew yogurt sauce, and hori tiki Greek salad. And for dessert, we will have a chocolate cardamom cake with rose cream and mint tea. And, and portion of, of our proceeds go to the Vegetarian Society here. We always want to support them. Pardon? And we are selling them, of course, at our Living Light booth. So you want to go to the booth. And the other thing that I want to say, just in case I forget at the end, and that is that um, we are having a drawing. So if you sign up for to be on our email or to be on our uh, mailing list, you may win. What are they winning, Dan? They're winning a trio of my books, which are the three books that were mentioned: Angel Foods, uh, Raw Food Revolution Diet, and Raw Food for Dummies. And by the way, Raw Food for Dummies, we're going to rename that Raw Food for Smart Busy People, <laughs> because I don't know how the publisher is going to feel about that. But the truth of the matter is, you're no dummy if you want to learn about raw foods. If you sign up for the email, you'll also email list. I mean the um, the uh, uh, newsletter, our free newsletter list. Uh, you'll also receive one of these. This is my latest ebook. It's uh, pickles, krauts, and kvass. Kvass are cocktails, not not non-alcoholic, but high high uh, probiotic rich cocktails. And I'm on your sample plate today. You're going to have two, uh, two different kinds of pickles. One is a jalapeno fig jam. It's really good. And the other, and that'll be with your Borson style macadamia almond cheese, which we're going to be preparing. And you're also going to get a dill pickle with your burger. I mean, what's a dill, what's a burger without dill pickle? And so the last thing I want to say, and I might repeat this at the end, is um, we're having a Hot Raw Chef contest. How many of you know about our Hot Raw Chef contests? Yeah, we've had several of them in the past. And the next Hot Raw Chef contest is going to be holiday foods. And you really want to go to the internet and watch all of these chefs. There's going to be probably 40 or 50 of them. Usually there are. They put up five minute demos using five ingredients, making, their, making it all in five minutes. Five ingredients in five minutes. So it's something that you can fit into your day, into your busy life around the holiday time. And, uh, and all you have to do, if you want to enter, of course you may, but uh, all you have to do is go to our site and all of them are there free for you to watch. And then if you vote for your favorite video, you will 
receive, uh, the, uh, you'll be, your name will be put into a raffle to receive one of these, a Vitamix blender. So you have the possibility of receiving a Vitamix blender, and you'll also receive one of our eBooks. And I'm not sure yet which one it will be. All the recipes from 5 and 5. Oh, yes, that's right. Excuse me. You'll get a whole recipe book of all the 5 and 5 recipes with the photos and the chef and their contact information and everything. So if you vote, you get that ebook with all the 40 or 50 recipes in it. So it's a, a cool thing. And it doesn't cost anything for you to vote. Nothing. All you have to do is go enjoy the videos, learn from them, and you'll get this free ebook. Oh, yeah, they're not up yet. But if you, once you sign up for the newsletter, then you'll get the bulletin telling you that they're all ready to go. And if you want to uh, enter, you certainly may. Okay, so let's get started. As I said, we're going to make meaty, cheesy foods today. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate how to make a kind of Borson-style cheese. Uh, it's absolutely delicious, and you can use it in many, many, many different ways. You can put it in lasagna. You can put it on pizza. Today, we're going to wrap it uh, 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 inside of candied pecans and serve it with a, a spicy jalapeno fig jam on a cracker. I mean, there's just no end to the way you can use this cheese. So if you, like me, are a cheeseaholic, this is a cheese you're going to find is so easy to make and you won't want to be without it. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, we have our, our almonds and our macadamia nuts here. The almonds are blanched. Now you can buy blanched almonds, but you're not going to be 100% sure that they are raw. You can blanch your own almonds, and you're not going to be letting them sit in that hot water for long, just hot enough so that the skins will pop off when you squeeze the almond between your fingers. So in other words, you put that raw, organic almond in hot, hot water for just a couple of minutes, then check to see if you can pop the skins off, then you plunge the almonds in cold water. So they still will germinate. They'll still be viable, but hot water won't have penetrated into the core, which is the life, which has the life force. So macadamias don't have to be blanched be, or, or peeled because they're already white, and we're mixing half and half. Now, your recipe calls for macadamia cheese, but we're using half almond and half macadamia. So we put those in our, our food processor. And then we're going to add water. And we only add just enough water to, for it to come to the top. That's all, just to the top of the almonds. OK. The almonds aren't floating, but, but the water is definitely up to the top. Then we're going to add our probiotic powder. Now, you have the recipe for card for this. And, and it calls for about a quarter teaspoon of probiotic powder. But I'm using a really good kind of probiotic powder here, which is why it calls for a quarter teaspoon. This is my favorite. You may find that if you're using a different probiotic powder, maybe the capsules that you have to open to get the powder out, you might need as much as twice as much because the, um, the, the strength of the probiotic powder will determine how fast the probiotics in the cheese will bloom and ferment the cheese. So I'm going to use my quarter cup. The brand, this brand that I love is called Moflora. It's made by Ejuva. And we sell it in our store. We have a, a, an online store as well as a physical store at Living Light. Uh, we have our school, of course. Most schools have a, a store, a culinary store, and we do. And most schools have a restaurant, and we do. And we also have an inn, an eco-friendly inn, where our students, as I said, come from around the world. Uh, and they stay at our inn, and they have a raw kitchen, and it's eco-friendly, so they sleep in organic mattresses and all that stuff. So it's kind of a taste of, of, of the new world, you could say that. All right, so all we have in here are our soaked nuts, water, and probiotic powder. And now all we have to do is blend this. Now, when you're using the, your Vitamix, I know you may not have one, but you're hoping to win one by signing up for our newsletter. Um, you're always going to start it on low. This is a variable speed. It has three, three knobs here. One of them is hyperdrive. We're not going to use that right now. We're going to keep this on number one, and we're going to turn it on. That's the lowest setting. 
Once things start to break down, then I can start turning it up slowly, slowly, slowly. If I turn it all the way up in the beginning, what's going to happen is all of the nuts are going to jump up and down and they're going to stick to the side of my container. And then I'm going to have to go in and scrape it all down. I don't want to waste that time. I, mean, I love being in the kitchen, but I don't want to waste time and make work for myself. So that's the way I do it. So we're going to turn it up slowly. Now at one point, the, the blender will not be able to manage turning this thick, thick mixture, because it's going to be a thick cheese. When that happens, I'm going to take the lid off and I'm going to use my spatula to just lift the mixture from the outside to the inside. You're going to see just barely, just barely the bottom of the spatula um, pushing it from the side, outside to the inside to enable those blades to pull the mixture in to what we call the vortex. I don't want to touch this spatula to the blades because then I've ruined the mixture. Okay, that looks great. That's all I'm looking for right there, this beautiful thick white cheese. And you see why I, it, it's so thick, that's why I had to use my spatula. I could have added more water and if I wanted to make this into yogurt, I certainly could add more water, couldn't I? And if I wanted to make it into kefir, I could add water and fruit and it would be a delicious fermented fruit drink. But in this case, we're going to make it into cheese. So here I have the mixture. And now I'm going to put it in, guess what? Cheese cloth. That's what cheese cloth is for. It's, for make, it's to use to filter the liquid or the whey from the cheese batter. So I'm going to just measure this. I'll show you how I do this. This is a berry basket. I'm using this as my form. I actually have four berry baskets together. I love making use of things that would go into the landfill. So this is one of those reuse, which is better than recycle. And so I use four of them because when I stack them inside of each other, I end up with dead space down here because they don't fit flush to the bottom. And so when I put my cheesecloth in, then, and, and the, the mixture starts to drain that liquid, that way through the cheesecloth, keeping the cheese inside the cheesecloth, then my cheese isn't sitting in water because this is protecting it. This is holding it away from the liquid. I'll show you what I mean here. So I've got uh, my scissors right here, which are not sharp. <laughs> Grab the wrong scissors. Okay, so we're going to chew them. Don't you just hate that when you have scissors that don't cut but they chew? Okay, that wasn't too bad. And by the way, this is unbleached cheesecloth and 100% uh, unbleached. Okay, and now this cheesecloth is not folded in half. It's too narrow for this, you see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. I'll find the salvage end. That's the end that is uh, not ragged. It's not been cut. It's the side. Let's see here. Okay. And I'm going to open it up all the way. And by the way, this is new cheesecloth, but you'd, you can reuse this. I just brought new because I wanted you to see how it needs to be opened up all the way. And then just fold it in half. It only needs to be in half. It doesn't need to be in all those, you know, all those different folds. Okay. Now, you can use this over and over again, but it does need to be laundered, and I use a lady's laundry, uh, uh, you know, lingerie bag. Um, no lingerie in the same <laughs> wash, right? But um, 
and then you get it nice and clean and then you don't put it in the dryer. You just let it hang, shake it out, let it hang flat and, uh, and then it dries really fast. In fact, a little trick, when I'm traveling around the world, quite often, you know, when you're traveling uh, in different areas of the world, they don't give you facial washcloths. Uh, something you have to ask for and they don't always necessarily have them. I take cheesecloth with me because it dries in hours and I use it as a washcloth and it works fine, it works great and cheesecloth was made to dry really quickly. Okay, so here we have our cheese and I've got it, I'm sitting, I've got my, my berry basket sitting on a, tr on a dish because water is going to drain out, we'll call it whey. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the kind of milky colored uh, liquid that is high in probiotics. You can actually put it in a dressing, especially if you want to make something like a ranch dressing. It gives it a nice brightness and adds more pro probiotics. Probiotics are really, really important in your diet. This is why I went to special trouble to make a book on krauts and pickles and kvass because um, I'm a big believer in probiotics. They help you lose weight. They help with uh, memory function. They help to make sure that your enzymes are, are all, all really doing their job. They're finding so many problems that are a result of all of the antibiotics and the drugs and the tap water that we, that we have, in, you know, that we're living with all around us and that kill the probiotics in our system. And they're saying now that it could also be a cause of one of the reasons we're more susceptible to cancer. So eating a probiotic rich diet is super, super important. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to let this cheese sit for a little while and um, maybe two hours and then we're going to put a jar of water on top and let it sit for another anywhere from six to twelve more hours depending on how fermented you want your cheese to taste. I like mine to be pretty hearty, pretty cheesy. So I'll usually go at least eight hours and maybe even twelve hours, especially in the winter time when it's not very warm, the air isn't very warm and it's not going to ferment as fast. The warmer the weather the faster your cheese will ferment. Now, here is the way, the system that I like to use. You see I have the multiple baskets here sitting on my tray. We've drained the excess whey off so that we could use it in something else. My dogs love it too. Um, and then we'll, we'll create a nice stable surface by putting another one of these free berry baskets on top and then a jar of water to weigh it down and that will help to press the cheese and make it more firm. And so now I'm going to show you what that looks like and um, I think I'll just take one of these bowls and take the cheesecloth off. I'm going to turn it over on this plate just so that you can see. You see I've taken the cheesecloth off and I'm going to take this off and look at that. Wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> so now I'm going to make something delicious and delightful out of that cheese and you know you can season it any way you want. Mexican flavors, Italian flavors, cheesy flavors, whatever you want. What I'm going to be making is an herb, kind of an herb cheese. I want to keep it very uh, plain tasting, not too you know, not too many strong flavors because we're going to be serving it, as I said, with a little bit of the jalapeno fig jam on a cracker and, it, and it's already got the pecans, candied pecans that it's been rolled in. So we don't want to over season it. But we're going to be putting in, and you have the recipe on that same, you see here I have the cheese balls, right? You can form it into different cheese balls. You can roll it in different kinds of uh, herbs or uh, here we have some uh, tricolor peppercorns, we have some nuts, some leeks, so you can roll it in anything that you want. One of my favorite seasonings for cheese, look at how dense that is, I don't know if you can see how dense that is. Um, one of my favorite seasonings for cheese is nutritional yeast. I like the cheesiness of it, I like that it ha adds uh, B12, 
if I, you know, you make sure that you buy the B12 fortified nutritional yeast, that's called vegetarian support formula. Red Star has been making vegetarian support formula uh, nutritional yeast for years. I'm also adding another source of probiotics, and that is light miso. Now, I use chickpea miso because chickpea miso is, has no grains in it. Most light misos are made with grain, usually white rice. And uh, at Living Light, we are very conscientious of the fact that people, a lot of people have allergies to grains. And so we actually are a totally gluten-free school as well as a vegan school. So we don't even use honey um, and nothing with gluten. Okay, so I am mixing that, that nutritional yeast and uh, light miso, chickpea miso, in really, really well because this is such a thick cheese. I want to make sure I don't have any big clumps. And then I'm going to add some other ingredients. Here I have some green onion that's been minced. You can add anything you want, of course. I'm adding some minced red onion. I'm also adding uh, some, that was parsley, that was flat leaf parsley, but you know, any kind of herbs you like. Here I have some dill, just minced up some dill. And a, just a pinch of white pepper. I like the wh white pepper rather than black pepper in um, the, my beautiful white cheese here. And I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of garlic in there too. And this is a microplaner. I like a microplaner because I don't get any big pieces of garlic in my mixture. And then in this recipe, you have pine nuts, chopped pine nuts. But I'm going to be rolling it in uh, pecans. So I don't necessarily need to put pine nuts in. The pine nuts are for additional texture. I like contrasting textures. You know, it's nice to have creamy and crunchy together. That's why we like chips and dip, isn't it? Because we like contrasts. Contrasts are why we like sweet and sour sauce. Sweet and sour. We like contrasts. So, uh, so we're going to be serving this on a cracker, and uh, as I said, we're going to roll it in some uh, chopped nuts, which will give us enough contrast. But you could just take it just the way it is, and you could serve it with, with crackers as a, a really nice appetizer or quick snack. There's some cheese right there. Just keep it really simple. Was that easy or what? Was that easy? Yeah. So. Here we have our cheese and our crackers, and I think that you'll find when you have yours that it's going it's pretty darn tasty. So let's just put that over there. In fact, um, I have a lot of followers just because of my cheese. In fact, when I, when I discovered that it was possible for me to make cheese, I knew I was going to be in heaven and I could make this diet last for my life because I was a vegetarian for so many years before I became a vegan, and the reason was I didn't want to give up cheese. As much as I loved animals and I knew the problems that it was causing my own health, I wouldn't give it up. I was addicted. I mean, that's what addictions are, right? Even in the face of bad health, there's a, a problem giving up the foods that you love. Well, I still have an addiction, but my addiction is to feeling good. That's my addiction. I want to feel good. I want to wake up every, every day feeling great, wanting to go for a run. Right now, my husband Dan and I are training for a 10K we're going to run next weekend. And, yeah. and uh, we just, I didn't even start running until I was 65. <laughs> so, it's never too late, you know? It's never too late. And the last time I ran, I went third place. So, you know, yeah. raw fooders are not weaklings. Okay, I'm going to ask you, Cynthia, to take this away because I won't be needing it again. Absolutely. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make, I'm going to, actually, I, I'm going to move over here, so I'm going to switch this because I want to make the chorizo last. I'm going to make the burgers next. How many of you would eat burgers if they were healthy? Why didn't every hand go up? <laughs> These burgers are better than the burgers They're you grew so up good. with. <laughs> so I know Cynthia was just telling me, I make those burgers all the time. <laughs> so this, this is a mushroom zucchini burger. And um, the base of this, of this recipe is vegetables. There are some walnuts in it. Now walnuts are actually a very good choice of nuts for uh, because of the, the 
omega-3 fatty acids, and they have a perfect balance of omega-3s and omega-6s. So the right balance for your body. So that's really nice. Now, if you have a diet that's really high in omega-6s, then you want to add more omega-3s to your diet. You could do what I do here. This is my this is like my runner's gel. You know, they have those fake runner's gel. My runner's gel is chia seed in water. And that's high omega-3s without the omega-6s. Mm -mm. And boy, does that make me feel good. Okay, so the base is vegetables. You're going to see if you look at your recipe that you've got mushrooms and you've got celery and you've got herbs and you've got onions and then spices and then we have the walnuts. And the walnuts are have to be broken down first because we don't want a big chunky uh, burger. So we're going to break down the walnuts first in my food processor. Now you can do all of this by hand, but I'm kind of a modern gal. I really like my, my gadgets. And you could do this in the least expensive, like $40 food processor. You don't need a big fancy one like this, but you know, why not? I like it. Okay, we're just going to break it down until a meal. There it is. Doesn't take long. Whoops. Doesn't take but uh, just a minute. And now I'm going to add my other ingredients. Actually, oh, I have to shred some um, zucchini. So I need to put, I could have done this by hand, but I want to show you how easy it is to use a shredder. A lot of people uh, are afraid of food processors. So I'm going to put that in there, right? There it is. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. I only need about a cup. So I will measure about a cup. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. That's about a cup right there. Get rid of that. And ah, isn't that cool? I feel so blessed that I was born when I was because there's so many things that I, I wouldn't be able to do, you know. Okay, take those for me too, please. That's the last time I think I'm going to need that. And if you follow along with me, let's just do this together. Follow along with your, the recipe so you kind of get a sense of all of it together. I put a half of a cup of the walnuts in the food processor with my S-Blade first. And then I shredded the zucchini. So I actually need this S-Blade back because now I'm going to put uh, that back in. And I'm going to add all my other ingredients, or you know, just pulse. No, the S blade, there. Oh, the S blade. The S blade. Do I still have it? Oh, here it is. Oh yeah. Okay. I hear somebody telling me it's right in front of you. Duh. Okay. So now we have the, the zucchini in there, and we're going to just over. -pro I mean, just process that a little bit, but don't over process it. We don't want to pate. We want texture. That's going to be really important. All right. Okay, that's all we want right there. Okay, can you? There's two little pieces that didn't make the grade. So that's what we've got. Now I'm making a very small amount here. You're probably going to want to make more, and you can even freeze mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Triple. <laughs> You've been taking taking this, you said, to your uh, potlucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I had a spatula. Did you take that already? I'm going to put this in a bowl along with the other ingredients. Didn't I have a spatula? Right here. Okay, thank you. Oh, I hadn't used it yet. Okay, so there's my walnut, um, my walnut and zucchini mixture. That's all. And see, you could have done that by hand. You really could. Just mince those nuts. I'm going to use this again, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, this is. I've been using a different type of food processor at the school this week. Plus I'm backwards, aren't I? Yes. Okay. We switched to that. There we go. Okay. So we're going to leave that for our chorizo. Now we're going to start adding all of our other ingredients, which means we're going to add um, our miso, which we have to mix in a little bit of water. And we mix this in water because if we don't, then the miso might end up in a big clump. You know, we don't want that. And Dark miso also is high in probiotics, and um, it 
So adding more probiotics to your food is a great thing. And it adds a kind of a beefy flavor uh, because it is because it is fermented, it adds umami, and umami is a flavor enhancer. I mean, it's really, it's the flavor of deliciousness, and there's a lot of ingredients that are vegan that contain umami, but um, meat also does, and so does dairy products, uh, but a lot of vegan ingredients contain umami. Tomatoes, potatoes, uh, a lot of chefs cook with wine, because it contains umami, but so does miso. So I, I like to use miso. I use it in a lot of different ways. I'm also going to be adding some, some finely minced celery, some finely minced onion, some nutritional yeast. Again, I'm sneaking in that B12, a little bit of salt. You've got the recipe in front of you. Let me know if I miss anything. White pepper, garlic. I'm going to you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put that garlic in with the miso so that it gets mixed in well and easily also. Little tricks of the trade there. I'm putting in some minced, uh, some minced parsley and very finely minced sage. Really make your sage finely minced. Otherwise, you could ruin your dish. I'm also adding some diced, uh, pretty finely diced uh, uh, mushrooms and they will soften as the salt and the miso and everything um, touches them. So we're going to mix all that together and then I'm going to do a, a little trick here to show you something. Okay, move all this out of the way for me please. And I'll put this over here if I have time I'll show how to do that. And this, we'll see how much time we have. Um, so, the walnuts that are left, all I'm going to do is press them with my, the, the, my hand. And this breaks walnuts down much better, really, than chopping. Because what you want is, oftentimes you want texture, you don't want a lot of fine powder. And so if you just do it with your hand, they just break. Because it's a soft nut, it's not a hard nut. And I want that texture in my burgers. I want a little, kind of like, I hate to say this, gristle. <laughs> it really doesn't sound good, does it? But that's the texture of burger. You know, it has a little bit of that in it. So we're going to put that in there. Continue mixing. Can you smell burgers in here right now? I can smell it coming from my food process or my dehydrator over here. Okay. Now the last ingredient that we're going to put in our burger mixture is flax meal. And this is golden flax meal and all we did was take flax seed and grind it up in a spice grinder and uh, put that, put that um, in here. And I like to grind my, my flax seed fresh every time. I don't like to grind it or buy it ground and use it that way. Now I'm going to take a, uh, a, a tray, a, a, this is an Excalibur dehydrator. Excalibur dehydrator is my favorite brand. People ask me all the time, what's your favorite type of dehydrator? I like the Excalibur because you can see here it's a perfectly square tray. I like that a lot. I don't like some, some trays are longer, they're rectangular, and that means that I can't make perfect square crackers. I end up having to cut a little piece off of the end that just goes to waste. It's not practical for me. I also like that I can take the lid off of this completely and wash it in hot soapy water. There's no hinges at the bottom to get messy. And uh, actually, Excalibur now has a glass door that you can, you can buy a glass door. One, not glass, but plexiglass, so you can see through it if you want. I find that really doesn't tell me anything seeing in it. I still have to open up the tray to look at it, really. I don't see anything. All right, so now I am going to form my, my burgers. And you can make big burgers or you can make little burgers, depends on what you want. 
Um, I'm going to make a half cup size burger here. And this is called a metric wonder cup. Pretty cool little thing. Measures whatever size you want, but I like it especially for burgers. Okay, I'm going to do I have that spoon still that I can pack this in with. I like to really pack it in firmly. You see it's all sticking together now. I had a, a long stem spoon somewhere. Okay. All right. Now watch this cool thing. See that? And then all you have to do is press it and you have your burger. Isn't that nice? Hey, I am full of tricks, I'm telling you. All right. So let's just put that aside. We can, we can, I showed them. That's all. I'm not going to do them all. And then we would put this in our dehydrator. And this one, you know, you can flatten it out more if you have some larger size burger bun or something that you want to put. I like to just wrap them in lettuce leaves. That's my burger bun is lettuce leaves. But then I like all the trimmings. And here are a couple of burgers. Look at how, the, how they change when they're dehydrated. They change color when they're dehydrated. And um, they are really rich and meaty. Really rich and meaty and delicious. So you're going to have some little mini burgers and they're going to be on just on a slice of cucumber with a little very flat, tiny, just a taste. Sorry I can't feed you all like full burgers. But just a little, a little taste. And then you're going to have a little pickle on top of that and a little secret sauce. Our secret sauce is our cashew mayonnaise, uh, our ketchup, which uh, is not made with vinegar and sugar. Uh, it's made with tamarind. And our mustard, which we sprout the mustard seeds and make the mustard. It all sounds complicated, but it's really not. And all those recipes are in uh, my book, Raw Food for Smart Busy People. Raw Food for Dummies. And uh, my husband, Dan, is the co-author of that book, by the way. So. Okay, so that's the story on our burgers. And the next thing that we're going to make, how are we doing for time, Cynthia? Doing good? Okay. So the next thing, meat that we're going to make, remember I said meaty, cheesy, vegan main meals, right? So the next thing we're going to make is something that I grew up with. I come from a Latin American heritage and I grew up with chorizo. How many like chorizo? I mean, you can use it in so many ways. Um, I, can, I can make it so that it's, it's very soft and pliable. I can form it into a sausage and cut it. Uh, or I can make it kind of like a ground meat like this is. You see that? Can you see that in the camera? I don't know if you can. I'll put it on here. Can you see that? It's just like ground meat. And it's spicy. Smell that? I don't know if you smell that. It's, it's spicy, it has all those Mexican flavors. And we're going to serve that to you today um, in just a little lettuce leaf with a little bit of tomato and some avocado crema. Avocado crema is just avocados blended with water, a little bit of lemon, and a pinch of salt. So it's just kind of like the sour cream of the raw world. Um, I could have used cashews instead to make my sour cream, but avocado is just kind of makes sense to me. So now what we're going to do is we're going, this is a similar process that I'm going to show you, similar to the burgers, but we're going to use um, Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts are super food. This one Brazil nut, if you ate it, one Brazil nut every day, that's your day's supply of selenium. Wow, I love being able to take something off of my counter and give it to my husband and say, here's your selenium supplement for the day, honey. I mean, it's great, real food, you know? So, so here we have our, we have that on right now. I'm going to set ourselves up with our S blade, and we're going to make a, oh, here you have your recipe right in front of you, chorizo, right? So we're going to process the Brazil nuts until they're ground, but we don't want them to turn into a puree. So make sure you don't over-process them. You will notice if they become a puree, they're going to start to kind of stick down here at the bottom. We don't want that. We want them to be moving freely. At the same time, 
we'd like them to maintain a little bit of texture. I'm looking for kind of a, a mila or, or quinoa, raw, those little, almost tiny little pellets. That's what I'm looking for because I want that texture. Unlike the mushroom uh, burger where we put some nuts in it separately, we're going to have all the same texture here with the Brazil nuts, but so we want to keep some texture. Okay, so I thought I didn't put this on quite right. The whole thing's supposed to be to the front. See, I have this backwards because it's usually facing me. So the whole thing should be to the front. Oh, this way, right? I have to turn it around. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be really cool and let you see everything, but I need to be able to see it. I think that's Okay, there it is. All right. Once you've got something in there, it's kind of harder to get. There we go. Okay. Almost. See a few big pieces. All right, I'm going to get those out of there. If they're still big pieces, I don't want them in there. A little quality control time here. I'm not going to over-process the rest of it just so that those three babies can be included. Sorry about that. But. All right, so this is, what, this is the right texture. Can you see that? It just looks like mila or quinoa. Can you see it? Yes, this means yes. Otherwise, I'll be here all day. Okay, good. Okay, so now we have our... You could, you, know, you could say that that's the base of the recipe. And now we're going to put them in a bowl, right? In a bowl. And I need a bowl. Here we go. And we're going to start adding our other ingredients. Again, this is something you could mince by hand. Don't let not having a food processor stop you. Just going to take a little longer. So, here we go. Thank you, Cynthia. All right. Now, the other part of this is zucchini. And this is finely diced zucchini. Remember, in the other recipe, we used shredded zucchini. In this one, we're using diced zucchini. Now, I'm not doing that just to change it up. I could use shredded zucchini, but I found that finely diced zucchini really is going to give me that texture that I want for my uh, for my chorizo. I'm adding also my red onions and I'm adding some, again, some celery. So there are some things that we're adding that are similar. Also the, uh, the mushrooms. And I want to just show you how to dice a mushroom. A lot of people have a hard time figuring out how do you make these little tiny squares, see those squares, out of this, you know, shape. So the first thing is I cut off the stem, and I can use the stem in a soup or something else. Now I'm going to place the mushroom flat on the, on the surface of the board, and I'm just going to fillet it, just like that. My hand has to be flat so I don't cut it. So like three times is enough. And then I'll go through and cut slices, kind of like if, as if I were trying to julienne a mushroom. And then I'll just turn it around the other way to dice it. So just like I'm dicing anything else, I cut the strips first, and then I cut sideways to make my little dices. And I can do any size I want. I, I filleted it three times. I could have filleted it twice. I could have filleted it four times if I wanted a finer dice. So you see how that works? Pretty cool, huh? So we'll just throw those in, even though it, it gives us a little bit more. Like I said, not rocket science. Now we're going to add some spice. This is a lot of spice. This is a Frontier brand, one of my favorite spice companies, Frontier Spice Company. Frontier brand Fiesta style. They make two different styles of chili powder. This one is Fiesta style. I think it's the best for raw food. Is that? We did measure that, right? That looks like a lot. <laughs> That looks like a lot. How much was I supposed to put in there? Five tablespoons. That was five tablespoons. Okay then. And this is cayenne pepper, just to give it a little bit more heat. 
I'm also adding salt, of course. You've got to have some salt in chorizo. Chorizo is fairly salty, actually. And again, I'm putting in my nutritional yeast. I can, I can sneak that in without you even knowing it's there. And um, I want that spatula back again, the rubber spatula that I stirred the last thing with. There's, oh, it's over here. OK. And that won't hurt anything, will it? No. I, what I try to do when I'm in the kitchen, I'm, I'm making multiple courses, is I always start with something that won't hurt the next thing if I don't wash. I mean, I'm saying wash the dishes, not wash myself. <laughs> so if I'm making a, a, a vanilla sauce and a chocolate sauce, which sauce do I make first? Of course. I put vanilla and chocolate all the time. It doesn't hurt a thing. You know, I scrape it out, and then it's all good. OK, so now I've mixed everything well together. All that chili powder, wow. It smells good. But then, you know, I like spicy food. You can make it more or less spicy. Oh, I was supposed to add a little bit of lemon to this as well. Just about, what, a tablespoon, I think it said? Was it? What, it, what is it? Do you know? Two, two tablespoons. OK, yeah. so that's about a lemon if, the, if your lemon isn't super juicy. Kind of dug the seeds out of that already, but I found one, so I, I took that out. OK. So I want to mix that before I add my flax, because um, I don't want the flax to stick to one area where there was a lot of lemon. So I want to mix that in really well. Everything is well coated. The lemon just adds a little layer of acidity there. Um, oh, I need a little garlic. Oh, I missed the garlic. Okay. No trouble because this is a microplaner. So I'm going to kind of do it a little bit at a time and mix it in. A microplaner actually purees the garlic for you, which is so nice. You don't ever get big chunks of garlic. You might get chunks of finger, though, if you're not careful. <laughs> so you really got to be careful there. OK, so also mix that in well. And Mexicans do like garlic. You could put oregano if this, in this if you wanted. You could add more cumin, but you know I wouldn't if I'm using the Fiesta style um, chili powder. It has enough cumin in it already. Chili powder, like curry powder, is really a blend of spices. Curry powder is a blend of many spices. They're all a little bit different. And um, same thing with the chili powder. You'll find that there's different formulas uh, of chili powder. And they have different amounts of cumin, different amounts of oregano, and so forth. So I just added some ground flax meal. Once again, um, I ground it specially to use for this. I didn't, it's not pre-ground. I didn't buy it ground. And it is, the flax meal, is the binder for the recipes. For both of these cheesy recipes, flax meal is the binder. Now, I could make this into any shape I wanted, just like I did with the burgers. I could form it into burgers. I could form it into sausage, a sausage shape, uh, like I did with the cheese that you're going to get, where you just make, uh, make a, a, you know, a cylinder shape. Um, in this case, though, I would like to show you how to make it as ground meat. And you could do the same thing with the burgers that I made. You can make the burger meat like ground meat too. And so all you do is you put it on the tray and just kind of spread it out. You don't have to take any special you know, time with it. Just make sure that it, it's got airflow all the way around. And usually a cup and a half or so, maybe two cups at the most, you don't want to you don't want it to, to all be filled in. And then it'll be dehydrated in just a few hours. And when you take it out, it looks like this one that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a little wrap out of this. See, this is what it looks like when it's dehydrated. See how dark it gets? It, one of the interesting things about the dehydration process is that the colors do change. They change quite a bit. Um, I remember one time when my cafe chef asked me to come up with a refried bean recipe. And so I wrote down my conception, conceptualization of uh, three different 
bean recipes, refried bean recipes. Of course, we don't use real legumes because you don't want to eat those raw. Um, too hard to digest, and they wouldn't really taste like I want my refried beans to taste. So I came up with three different recipes, all very different, and I thought, well, these will be a, this will be a place to start, and I gave the recipe to one of our interns in the kitchen, a couple of interns, actually, and I asked them to make the recipes. And <laughs> one of them came out bright pink because it had beets and carrots in it, and and uh, it also had you know, a lot of other ingredients, but a little bit of beet goes a long way. So it was bright pink, and they said, well, this one's not going to work. And I said, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Let's get it in the dehydrator first, and then we'll see. And sure enough, it was, it was just the color of, of refried pinto beans. It, you know, pinto beans have a little bit of a pink blush, and then, but they're brown, but just with that little pink blush. And that's the rest that ended up being the recipe that we've used for years to make our taco salad in our cafe. They taste it tastes so much like refried beans. So, James, I'm going to need a little setup for uh, to show our friends here what a wrap would look like. I need the uh, I need a little lettuce piece and um, and the crema because they're over there plating your samples right now. While he's getting ready to bring that, can any of you have questions? Yes, tell, tell me your name and, and your question. Hi, my name is Rick. Rick? Hi. Okay, that's a really good question, Rick, yes. Um, a, a dehydrator can, can remove the moisture from food without cooking it because it can uh, it can go well below the temperature of I oh thank you I do have some here so I won't need that it can go well below the temperature of an oven an oven can only go to a, as low as 150 degrees and at 150 degrees will kill the nutrients that we, we want in this, that's lo in this food. Antioxidants and phytonutrients especially uh, are, are damaged as a result of high temperature heating. And so they all, all foods have their own threshold of temperature that they cannot exceed before different nutrients are destroyed. Um, and fats can become carcinogenic um, and, and nuts have fat in them. And so we don't want to heat nuts over that threshold. And it, usually with a dehydrator, we would say, especially if the food is already dried, it would be 118 degrees would be the highest. And a lot of people, when they're using dehydrators, will go even further, lower down, and err on the side of safety by turning the dehydrator only as high as about 105. And the reason for that is all dehydrators ebb and, and, and uh, they get high and they get low. They go on, off, on, off, and then the air is constantly removing the moisture. So when the dehydrator turns on, it may exceed that 105 degrees. It may get as high as 118, and that's the threshold. So you, that's the reason why most raw food books will say 105. However, if something is high in water content, I always recommend that you start your dehydrator high because it takes a while for the core temperature of the food to actually get anywhere near even 105. And what will happen is, is your food will start to kind of just be sweating and sitting there in a warm climate that can attract bacteria. You don't want that. What you want is, is to go ahead and high water content foods only, turn the temperature up to about 135 for maybe an hour. Until, the, until it's warm to the touch, then turn it down. And you can use a dehydrator to marinate foods, you can use it to um, warm your foods, you can use it to melt uh, coconut oil, you can use it to completely dehydrate and make crackers. The crackers that your cheese is going to be served on is cracker that we made in a dehydrator, just like this. And it's made with flax and different kinds of vegetables. It's the sweet red pepper flax. Okay, so Dan. Great. So Dan is going to pass these around in case you didn't get to sign up for the free ebook um, and to be on our newsletter. You can sign up. Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Ron. Ron? Uh, can you show us how to dice the 
How did we di how did I dice the zucchini? Um, what I did with the zucchini was I cut it in it's it's you know it's a cylinder shape, so I cut it in a reasonable size. I took one side off. Now it's a flat surface, so it's not going to roll around. And then I just cut little planks. And then once I had cut all the planks, I stacked them on top of each other. And then I cut julienne strips, just like that. And once I had all the julienne strips cut, then all I had to do, just like any dice, this is the technique that you use for dicing, then you just go in and you dice. Cross cut. So that's how you do that. You're very welcome. Now I'm just going to show you, well, take that. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to show you the, um, here we have some little bit of, of uh, julienne uh, tomatoes, cut pretty much the same as I just showed you. And we're going to put a little bit of, uh, normally at home, of course, I would make bigger ones, but this is the size you're going to be getting here. And then this is the avocado crema that I told you about earlier that is going to be like your um, sour cream. And you can see pretty much the same. That would be the size that I would make at home. I'd probably eat two of them. And then this is going to be the one that you're going to have today. So there you have it. And I know I had a lot of other questions, and I'm happy to answer any of them. Yes. Hi. How are you? Hi. Okay, um, I know that California has this new, not so new anymore, uh, ruling to protect us from the dangers of raw almonds. Oh my gosh, but we can eat chicken. Just don't want to eat chicken without sterilizing it first. Okay, I'm, I'm being facetious. I'm sorry if you eat chicken. But, you know, it's just not right. It's not fair. Anyway, we buy our almonds directly from the almond farmer. You can buy almonds directly from an almond farmer, and they don't have to be pasteurized. An organic almond farmer, you have to buy more. Yeah, but I, I do, but the only ones that they have are not organic. Oh, but you can't find the organic ones. Okay. No. Grocery store, the ones are, are pasteurized. Um, do you know what company, what almond grower we're using? I mean, oh, Joe yeah. does our, you know what? Oh, Go to Joe. He is at our booth, our Living Light booth. He does our ordering. He knows the name of our organic almond producer here in California. And, uh, and, and so you, you can't buy them in a secondary vendor, which is your grocery store. A secondary vendor can, cannot sell raw almonds. Only the farmer can sell them to you. And yeah, they're they're pretty much they're small farms, but you, we buy a hundred pounds at a time. Yes. What is probiotic powder? Where do you get probiotic powder? Well, what is it? Then? What is it? It's uh, it's the live organisms that are that you want to make sure that you get one that's not in a lactose base, uh, which is one of the reasons why I like the brand that I have here. Um, probiotics can be grown on. A lot of different kinds of mediums. Cabbage is, is, is probi grows probiotics naturally without using a, a, a starter of any kind. You can also grow it on grains. Uh, so it depends. Pardon? It's bacteria. It's bacteria. It's a friendly flora. It's friendly bacteria, and it it brings your intestinal tract into balance because there's so many unfriendly bacterias. And if you don't have enough friendly bacteria, then your body is susceptible to a lot of different problems. So, yes. Um, okay, one question from you, and then I have others. Okay, Rick? Um, would you consider Korean um, kimchi? Ki kimchi is definitely a probiotic rich food. Yes, and I, I make kimchi. In fact, in that book that you, you're going to get, if you sign up, there's a, my recipe for kimchi in there. It's easy, you don't have to bury it in the ground for a month. Okay, yes. What's your name? Lori. Hi, Lori. Mila. Mila. Mila is a ground chia. It's just, this is just chia and water. But it's ground because if you do the whole chia seed, it makes a wonderful pudding, kind of like tapioca, but you're not getting all the benefit of the omega-3 fatty acids because it's not broken. Mila. Mila is a brand, and it's my favorite brand of fractured chia. And uh, you, you're not going to find it in your grocery store. You can find it online. We sell it, but you know. 
Mila. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a particular chia that grows at a high altitude near the equator. You know, it's got all these, you know, it's the reason why I use it, this particular one. Yes, if you can make it yourself. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You can grind, you can grind a chia and, and put it in water. You can use it in, in your crackers and your breads and everything that way. Mila. It's, yeah, it's very high in antioxidant value as well as uh, uh, omega-3 fatty acids. I'm going to come over to this side now. Hi. Where can we get probiotic powder? You can buy probiotic powder in the refrigerator section of a, any health food store, including Whole Foods. You won't get this brand. This is a brand that you won't find there. This is the one I use, and we sell it. On a, we have a, a store where we sell over a thousand different products. The kinds of things that I use, you'll find there. And, and I do a lot of research as to the company, how conscious they are, um, you know, how they invest their money, how, you know, if, they, if they're equal opportunity people. I mean, we just do a lot, and this is a really good company. So that's why one of the reasons I use Ejuva Moflora. Mo, it's, it's made by Ejuva, and it's called Moflora. Moflora. M-O-F-L-O-R-A. What's your website? And our website is rawfoodchef.com. Hi, Lucy. Uh, rawfoodchef.com. And you can go there and find out information about all of our classes. And as I said earlier, you don't have to want to be a chef to come to Living Light. We have programs as short as a weekend. You can come for a week. You can come for uh, 21 days. My sister, who was very obese all her life, um, finally decided about two years ago that I was on to something. Because um, <laughs> she came to visit us. She came to visit us in Costa Rica. She couldn't do, even come close to keeping up with Dan and I. And I'm eight years older than she is. So she decided. So she heard about the, oh, by the way, in Costa Rica, in 10 days, she lost 30 pounds. She wasn't on a diet. She just ate what we ate. And she started walking. And you know, she lost weight. So she decided she, she really wanted to get into this. So she said, I'm going to come out to that 21-day program you told me about. You know, we created a 21-day program because they say it takes 21 days to change a habit. So in this 21-day program, you are absolutely immersed in this lifestyle. And you learn from the very basic things all the way to being able to make up your own recipes. You know, and really making food beautiful and making it taste great. And so she was so motivated that she stayed with it. And two years later, she's lost over 100 pounds. That's how how much weight she had to lose. Really amazing. I'm really so proud of her. But not only did she lose the weight, she has a whole new life. I mean, really, can you imagine what a new life she has now, a new lease on life. She has a reason to get up every day. She likes herself. She cares about what she looks like. She, doesn't, she knows she's not killing herself. She has a focus on health. And when she first came to the school, people thought she was my mother, eight years younger than me. And I said, oh, Michelle, they don't think that. She said, oh, yes, they do. I mean, she took it very seriously. I think that really kept her on track. You know, we, we Sorias are, can be a little vain. Yes? You know, that's such a great question, and I'm so glad you asked that. In all my books, I teach people how to make Rejuvelac. And in fact, in my, uh, I have a cheese ebook as well, that if you're on our mailing list, at some point, I'm sure you'll get the offer to have that um, free as well. Um, I am a believer in Rejuvelac. And when I first invented cheeses, because I was the first one who came up with the idea of fermenting nut pâtés and make, think, making them into cheeses, I used Rejuvelac. That was... My, my probiotic starter was Rejuvelac. But what I found was a lot of people didn't want to go through the trouble of making Rejuvelac. Not that it's a lot of trouble. You, uh, the way I make it is you sprout the grain. Uh, after it's sprouted, which takes about a day and a half, you fill it with water. You let it sit for about two days, and then you, uh, you have Rejuvelac. And, uh, and then you use that same batch of grains for another two days after that. So you have a half a 
week worth of Rejuvelac. You can drink it, you can put it in smoothies, you can use it in dressings, and you can use it as a starter for cheeses. So all my books tell you how to do that, because I believe in that. But I started using probiotic powder to make it easy for anybody who wanted to do it. It's just more accessible to most people. You can use any kind of nut or seed to make cheeses. What you're going to find is every nut and seed has its own identity, just like we do. All, you know, we're all a little different in nuts and whatever. Um, <laughs> so we all have our own identity. And so, for example, I use pine nuts when I want to make Parmesan cheese. I will take my pine nut cheese, make it exactly like I did with my macadamia or almond cheese. I spread it thinly on a dehydrator tray, and then I dehydrate it. And it, it, it dehydrates paper thin, and then I use one of these to scrape it off of the Teflex sheet, and then it ends up in little flakes. And the little flakes are just beautiful Parmesan. I salt it. I salt the cheese. That's the only addition that I do to it. Um, and if I'm making a, a cheesecake, I'll use cashew cheese. If I make, in fact, cashew cheese works well for a lot of desserts because it's so rich and creamy and just like Philadelphia cream cheese. Uh, but I'll also use hazelnut cheese for desserts. Wonderful. Hazelnut cheese with a chocolate pie. Oh, amazing. So all kinds of different nuts and seeds for your cheeses. And, you know, these are some of the things that you learn when you come to Living Light Culinary Institute. And, um, and spend a weekend with us or spend a, a, a week or more with us, you really learn how to make healthy living delicious. That's what we're all about. And I just want to say, because a lot of people have joined us since, we've, um, since I started, that we are catering the gourmet raw vegan meal tonight. And so if you've enjoyed your meal, and we only actually are selling 75 tickets, so you have to buy your ticket soon, and it's at 6.45 this evening, but we're making a metze meal, a gourmet Greek meal with dolmas, and, and the dolmas are having, have a um, preserved lemon sauce, falafels with a, a yogurt herb sauce. We've got horiatiki, that's hemp nut horiatiki, and, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, tabbouleh, hemp nut tabbouleh, a horiatiki, and uh, a hummus, so fabulous hummus, and an olive focaccia bread. Uh, for dessert, we have a cardamom chocolate cake with rose cream. S so Mediterranean and so fabulous. So uh, it'll be our pleasure to serve you tonight if you choose to dine with us. And we're going to give you samples right now. We're ready to start sending the samples out. And the tickets for tonight, um, they're $26. A portion of that will go to the San Francisco Vegetarian Society. We want to support them every year. Um, our tickets will be for sale at our booth, the Living Light booth, which is against the wall. It's against the wall and um, about three booths over from the back. So you'll see us over there. We can also answer any questions that you have about our school. And we're selling our books, uh, Angel Foods, Raw Food Revolution Diet and Raw Food for Dummies. So as soon as we're finished here, we're going to be going uh, over to the booth and I'm going to be signing books. And here we have our sample tray coming up. We have our sample tray coming up. I'm still here to answer questions if you have questions. Yeah, Sherry, I've never seen that dark miso. Like I've seen like a red miso or a barley miso. Like what is that a garbanzo bean? Okay, so the, the dark miso, the question has to do with the type of dark miso that I use. It's actually an azuki bean miso. So again, it's not, it has no soy in it. And so soy is a common allergen for people. And we really do our best to choose products that aren't going to be, uh, uh, have allergic reactions. Now, that said, there's tree nuts in everything I made today. So if you have an, aller an allergy to tree nuts, I'm sorry about that. I'm sure you, no thanks. Sorry, you mi I know you missed out on a, uh, miss out on a lot of uh, raw foods especially. Um, people often ask me, isn't it a lot of nuts? Don't you eat a lot of nuts with raw food? Well, on a daily basis, I don't eat, I mean, you, you have three dishes here that all have nuts. You're not going to eat all three of those dishes in one day. You might have some cheese with your salad. And that, for me, would be the only nuts I'd eat all day. If I had a, one of these burgers, that would be all the nuts I'd eat all day. And nuts are not, we're not going to vilify nuts. 
They're, nuts are actually good for you. You just don't want to overdo anything, and you certainly don't want to overdo nuts. But one of the reasons I really love the nut cheese particularly is because of the probiotic rich nature of them, that they're very, it's very easy to digest. Who's had the cheese already with the fig jam on it? What do you think? Fabulous. Pretty good, huh? I think fit for a foodie. Yes, question? A substitute for flax would be chia. Chia can be used in the same way as flax. You can grind it and put it in your crackers and in your uh, crusts and cookies and whatever you would use flax in. Uh, granola, you can use chia. It's actually, it's more expensive, but it's actually better for you. Because, and I like that it doesn't have the, as much of, a, of the flaxy flavor. You know, I, uh, the, we're making a bread t tonight, uh, an onion, focaccia, all, onion olive focaccia bread for your dinner, and that's made with chia. And I just, I, you don't have as much of that kind of gumminess that you get from flax. So, what do you think? Good? Pretty good? Thank you. Yeah. I would have, I would have the, yeah, which way? I would have the cheese first, then the burger, then the chorizo. The chorizo, chorizo is spicy, so that would be the last thing that I would have. Or you could have the cheese last and think of it as dessert, because it has that, it has a little spiciness too, but it's got the sweet uh, fig jam. And by the way, I just want to say that the book that we're giving you for signing up for the newsletter today, which is Pickles, Krauts, and Kvass, that chili, chi that, uh, Jalapeno fig jam is a pickled jam. And the pickle was also pickled, and that, that's in this book too. I just want to show you. This is um, our latest book. So there are some of the, of the uh, things that you're going you're gonna to have. We've got pickled vegetables. We've got kimchi, pickled radishes, pickles from cucumber pickles. We've got these amazing zesty uh, cocktails made from different kinds of... Uh, probiotics, and also some um, different kinds of other kinds of drinks and, and veggie. Uh, so anyway, all different kinds of free recipes for you. Any other questions? Still have just a couple minutes left. Yes. Age limit for our school? No, for the... So Dan, will you answer that question? You know, you know all of the. We're licensed by the California Bureau of Private and Post-Secondary Education, and I think that you need to have a high school, high school, or a high school diploma or GED, so an equivalent. And when people come from outside of the country, they just need to show us an equivalent of our high school uh, education. Well, and you know. If it's for a vocation, if you're not wanting to get certified, you can come, you know, like you could come with your daughter. And you could come for vocational training and get your certificate. She could come for a vocational, which means that it doesn't have to be counted toward the whole California certification process. So, you're welcome. Yes. When you come for the weekend, if you come the first day, you have 18 food demonstrations. Today you saw three. You see 18 food demonstrations and two lectures. And you taste everything and you feast on food. We, make, we show you how to grow wheatgrass, how to sprout, how to make rejuvelac. Um, we show you every, no, we don't do rejuvelac. No, but we make you, cheese. And you get the recipes for those days. Yes. Too. And, and of course, you take home recipes. So you make everything from appetizers through desserts. You learn to use all the different equipment in a raw food kitchen. Um, the second day, if you stay for the second day of the weekend, Sunday, it's knife skills. So you really learn how to use knives safely and make beautiful, beautiful food. One of the things that I hear people say sometimes about raw food is, it's too much chewing. Now that may sound funny, but I can understand that. It, you know, think about, just for a minute, wrap your head around this. Taking a big bite out of a beet. 
not so much fun, chewing a big beet. But if that beet were shredded and tossed in a marinade, you like it, but you know most people don't, um, toss it in a marinade or something, it's quite delicious. So changing the texture of food definitely makes it more tender, more appealing, even changes the flavor because you're creating more surface space for your saliva to coat it and then your saliva helps to transform the starches into sugar. So creating finer cuts or even shredding vegetables makes them more delicious faster in your mouth. So the second day is knife skills and you can sign up for just knife skills or just fundamentals or come for the whole weekend. And you know, it's a beautiful area, Fort Bragg, it's on the Mendocino Coast. You know that this year, New York Times said that if you're going to go to one place in the United States, it's the north coast of California. That's where we are, the north coast of California. It's absolutely exquisite. I want to say one thing too. Somebody asked me a question out of a big group of friends I have. So how do you like the school? If you had a chance to do it again, would you do it again? And I said, I absolutely would do it again. It was the best experience of my life. It changed my life. So I would definitely recommend. Three weeks, boom. It was fabulous. It was very well run. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay, well, we're going to go over to our booth. Um, I just have to make my way out of here so the next speaker can come on. But then I'm going over to the booth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that I've inspired you to make some meaty, cheesy foods for yourself and your family and your friends and to dine with us tonight at our Metze meal. And you can buy the tickets over at our booth. Okay.